Periodontium comprises of gingiva, cementum, alveolar bone and the periodontal ligament. In this video we will be starting with the gingiva and will be mainly covering with the types of gingiva. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we at Dentorize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. Starting with what gingiva actually is, gingiva in layman language is called as the gums, the pink portion we see in the mouth. So in adults, the normal gingiva covers the alveolar bone and the tooth root to a level just coronal to the level of CEJ as you can see in the figure. The brown line roughly demarcates the level of CEJ and the gingiva is present a little coronal to the CEJ. Please observe the figure. Gingiva is mainly of three types, the marginal gingiva, the interdental gingiva and the attached gingiva. In this video, we will be talking about all these three types in detail. First of all, talking about the marginal gingiva, this gingiva is present on the margins of the tooth as we can see in the figure on left with the help of red arrows. This gingiva is roughly 1 mm wide and it is demarcated from the adjacent attached gingiva by a shallow linear depression called as the free gingival groove marked in the figure on left with the help of black dotted lines and marked in the figure on the right with the help of a black arrow. This marginal gingiva surrounds the teeth in a collar like fashion. If you talk about the surface of this marginal gingiva facing towards the teeth that means the soft tissue wall of marginal gingiva this soft tissue wall of marginal gingiva forms the gingival sulcus. If we talk about the most apical point of the marginal gingiva, then this point is called as the gingival zenith marked in the figure on extreme right with the help of blue arrow. Getting into the details of gingival sulcus, gingival sulcus is a V-shaped shallow crevice or space around the tooth lined on one side by the tooth surface and on the other side by the epithelium of the marginal gingiva marked in the figure with red arrow. Normally, the depth of gingival sulcus should be 0 mm. However, practically it is very less possible. Such kind of gingiva is also called as the pristine gingiva. However, again, this is practically very less possible. So, the depth of gingival sulcus in a clinically healthy human gingiva according to the histological sections should be 1.8 mm. However, clinically if it is checked with the periodontal probe, it is roughly 2 to 3 mm and that too depends upon various factors, for example, the force of probing. The next type of gingiva is the attached gingiva. Attached gingiva as the name suggests is attached or is tightly bound to the periosteum of the underlying bone. It is firm, resilient and is continuous with the marginal gingiva. It is demarcated from the marginal gingiva with the help of free gingival groove as we have already discussed, demarcated in the figure with black dotted lines and it is demarcated from adjacent alveolar gingiva with the help of mucogingival groove marked in the figure with the help of green dotted lines. This mucogingival groove remains stationary throughout the life. If you talk about the extent of the attached gingiva, then facially, the facial aspect of attached gingiva extends right from the marginal gingiva or the free gingival groove up till the loose movable alveolar mucosa. If we talk about the attached gingiva in the maxilla palatally, it blends imperceptibly with equally firm and resilient palatal mucosa, lingually in the mandible. The attached gingiva terminates at the lingual alveolar mucosa which then becomes continuous with the mucous membrane of the floor of the mouth. If you talk about the width of attached gingiva, it is very important from the clinical point of view. Understanding what is width of attached gingiva, it is basically the distance between the bottom of gingival sulcus or periodontal pocket marked in the figure with red dotted line and the mucogingival junction marked in the figure with blue dotted line. So the arrow that is right from the gingival sulcus till the mucogingival junction marked in the figure with black is the width of attached gingiva. However, width of attached gingiva is very different from the width of keratinized gingiva. 
width of keratinized gingiva is marked not from the gingival sulcus but from the tip of marginal gingiva up till the mucogingival junction marked in the figure with blue arrow please observe the figure very carefully and understand the difference between the two the width of attached gingiva is usually constant but it increases at the age of 4 years or so or in the case of supra erupted teeth so talking about the numerical values of width of attached gingiva in the incisor region it is the greatest in maxilla it is roughly 3.5 to 4.5 mm in the mandible it is 3.3 to 3.9 mm in the posterior segment the width of attached gingiva is the lowest in the maxillary first premolar it is roughly 1.9 mm and in the mandibular first premolar it is roughly 1.8 mm and these numerical values should be on the tips from the clinical point of view as well as the examination point of view as well the last type of gingiva is the interdental gingiva as the name suggests it is present in between two teeth and occupies the gingival embrasure which is interproximal space beneath the area of tooth contact in the anterior region the interdental gingiva is pyramidal in shape with the tip of one papilla located immediately beneath the contact point as you can see on the figure on left in the posterior region the interdental gingiva is coal shaped that means a valley like depression that connects the facial and the lingual papilla as you can see on the figures on the right if you talk about the borders of the interdental papilla then the lateral borders and the tip of interdental papilla are formed by the marginal gingiva of the adjacent teeth and the intervening portion consists of the attached gingiva as you can see in the figure on the left However, if diastema is present, gingiva is firmly bound over the interdental bone to form a smooth rounded surface without any interdental papilla. Please observe the figure. The entire content has been taken from Carenza, the standard book for periodontology and this video discussed roughly about the types of gingiva. In the next video, we will be talking about the microscopic features of gingiva. If you like the content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload any new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Hope the content was helpful for you.